Hi everyone and welcome back for this third tutorial dedicated to flat pattern making for knit fabrics. In the first two episodes, we have learned how to trace the basic blocks for a knit skirt, bodice and sleeve and today we are going to learn how to trace the basic legging block in one piece without side seams. We will trace it flat at the table from our own measurements but rest assured that there are no complex calculations and that this tutorial really is for everyone even if the sight of a calculator gives you an instant headache. So let's get started. Here are the measurements that we will need. Our waist measurement, our hip measurement, which is to be taken at the fullest part of the hip area. Our thigh measurement, this is to be taken slightly below the crotch where our thighs are the fullest. Our knee measurement, as well as our ankle measurement. Voila, we are already done with the circumferences. Now we have a few lengths to measure. So first, the trouser length. This is the total desired length of your legging from the level of your waist down to your ankle's level. Then the waist to knee measurement. So that's the distance between the level of your waist and the level of your knees. Then the waist to hip length that we should measure exactly at the level where we measured the hip circumference. And finally, the riser measurement, which is the distance between your waist level and your crotch level. And I will show you how to quickly and easily measure that now. We are going to sit on a stool with an elastic placed around our natural waist do as I say not as I do <laughs> and we are simply going to measure the distance between the waist level and the seat. To do that we are going to use a rigid ruler instead of a soft tailor's ribbon. We place it on the seat of the stool and measure up to the level of our waistline. It is also possible to measure the length of our front crotch and our back crotch for better accuracy in our pattern. But since we are working with stretchy materials for today, the riser, the crotch height will be sufficient. Now that we brought up the matter of fabric stretchability, be aware that it really differs from one fabric to another and that it is possible to reduce from 5 to 10% even more the measurements we just took, depending on the stretch ratio of our fabric and in order to avoid having leggings that are too loose if we are working with a really stretchy knit. That being said, it is quite difficult to predict beforehand how a fabric will behave. There is no magic formula or truly fail-proof system. And when a designer wishes to launch a new design in his collection, of course, he will have made or he will have had made a prototype in order to slightly modify his basic blocks for knits according to the stretch and the characteristics of the new material. As for today, don't be worried, we are simply going to not add any ease nor any seam allowance and if needed, we will just adjust our pattern after the first fitting. If the leggings are too loose, for instance, we will add negative sewing allowance or we will simply trace it again quickly with slightly reduced measurements. The point, of course, is to learn how to trace this very pattern and I know you are eager to do so let me quit chit-chatting and digressing and finally get to the work at hand. So we need something to trace on, which should be as long as our leggings plus about 10 centimeters and as wide as our thigh measurement plus about 20 centimeters. I will scale down my own legging so as to have it fit the frame of my camera. The black will be used for construction lines and the red for the final pattern shape. And just to be clear on where this is all going, here is another peek at the final result. It's one leg, the right leg, and the left leg will simply be obtained by symmetry. To begin with, I traced a vertical line, which is the center leg's straight line. Then I will trace a first perpendicular line, which is my waistline. 
Then, starting at the waistline, I measure down and mark the waist to hip length and I trace my hip line, which is also perpendicular to the center leg straight line. Starting again from the waistline, I measure down and mark the height of my crotch. This is actually the riser measurement and I can trace the riser line. Now again, same thing to mark the waist to knee measurement and to trace the knee line and for the waist to ankle measurement, which is the full desired trousers length from your waist down to your ankles or to your calves if you wish a shorter legging, of course. Voila, to sum up, we have traced the center leg straight line, which corresponds to the side of your legs as well as the waistline. Then we traced the hip line, the distance between these two lines corresponds to the length between your waist level to your hip level. Then we traced the riser line, so we have here the length between your waist level and your crotch level. Then we indicated our knee line according to the distance between your waist level and your knee level. And finally we traced our ankle line with here the full desired length of the leggings from the waist down to the ankles. On this side we are going to trace the front and here the back of our leg. Let's start by tracing the bottom of the leggings. I am just going to quickly make a close-up of the ankle and knee lines. Ta-da! Here is my ankle line and knee line. From the center line, I measure and mark on the front side half of my ankle measurement and also half of my ankle measurement on the back side. So here we have half of the ankle circumference and here is the other half. Please don't look at my ruler's measurements, I am tracing a tiny pattern. The whole ankle circumference is equally distributed on both sides of the center straight line. We are now going to do exactly the same on the knee line. Starting from the center line towards the front side, I measure and mark half of the knee measurement and we mark the other half on the other side. So here we have the circumference of our knee divided by 2 and here as well. The full circumference of our knee is equally distributed on both sides of the center straight line. We can now connect all these marks and trace the bottom part of the leggings. Voila! It's a really easy and smooth process, so don't give up! The bottom of the legging is done, you can allow yourself a little break, a little piece of chocolate maybe, and it is time to focus on the top part. Quick reminder, this is the waistline, the hip line and the riser line. On the waistline, from the center line, I measure and mark a quarter of my waist measurement and then add one centimeter. On the back side, I measure a quarter of my waist measurement and subtract one centimeter. So here I divide my waist measurement by four and then I add one centimeter. And for the back, I divide my waist measurement by four and then I subtract one centimeter, the one centimeter that the front just stole purely for aesthetic reasons as we already learned in the first episode of this series. We are going to rise this point from 2 or even 2.5 centimeters if you feel like you need a little bit more space to accommodate your behinds and it is now possible to connect these two points with a curve. And if you don't have one, you'll find a link to this curve down below. I will do my best to use it now for this teeny tiny pattern, but obviously the curve is made for a proper full scale pattern. Alright, on the hip line now we have a quarter of the hip measurement for the front and the same for the back. You can also add another 0.25 cm for the front and subtract it to the back, but it isn't compulsory. Voila! The same way we did before, let's connect all the dots with a straight ruler. We are done with the top of the legging as well as the bottom part. Now let's focus on the best part, the crotch area. To do that, we are going to trace two perpendicular lines in order to transfer the marks from the hip line onto the riser line. 
These are construction lines, they are not the final shape of our part and piece, or else, trust me, we could not fit in. Now, from this point on the riser line, we will need to distribute between the front and the back of our leg what is called the crotch amount, and I will show you now how to calculate this crotch amount. Nothing complicated here, but pay close attention, and if needed, don't hesitate to pause the video. The calculation is as follow. The thigh measurement minus the hip, not hips, I'm sorry, measurement divided by 2. If, for example, our thigh measurement is 60 cm and our hip measurement is 110 cm, that's about a size 46 EU or 16 in the US, we will have our thigh measurement, which is 60 in our example, minus our hip measurement divided by 2. So here it's 110 divided by 2, which makes 60 minus 55 equals 5 cm of crotch amount. You can find a higher number, for me for instance it's about 9 cm, but you can also easily find a lower number, even something very close from zero, if let's say you have really thin legs compared to your hip and belly. This crotch amount needs to be distributed between the front and the back of the leg to create the front and the back crotch shape. But how? It all depends on your own unique and amazing body shape and on how the volumes belly slash behinds are distributed. Some books suggest, for instance, a third of the crotch amount on the front and two thirds on the back. Others recommend to divide the crotch amount by two and subtract one centimeter for the front and so on the back to divide the crotch amount by two and add one centimeter since the back usually is longer and fuller than the front, but once again our shapes are all different and unique. Back to our example, our crotch amount was 5 cm, 5 divided by 2 equals 2.5, so we will have 2.5 minus 1 equals 1.5 cm for the front, and 2.5 plus 1 equals 3.5 cm for the back. In my own case, for example, the crotch amount is 9, 9 divided by 2 is 4.5 that I distribute like this, 3.5 cm for the front and 5.5 cm for the back. We are going to drop this point by 1 cm in order to deepen and lengthen the back crotch a little bit more and we can then connect the dots with our curve. Now again, please do not throw water tomatoes at me, I'm having a hard time tracing this tiny pattern with my full scale curve. Now to create the curve between the crotch and the knee line, we are first going to draw a straight line, which is a construction line. At about one third of the distance, starting from the top, I scoop out the line from about one centimeter which will help me to redraw in a lovely curve. Now, even though it is standard, it's important to write where is the front and where is the back of your piece so you don't get confused later. Name your piece, indicate the size, maybe the name of your client, also how many times you should cut it, two times symmetrically for a legging, and also I like to trace the grain line. Voila! I completely forgot to point out a really important technical detail for tracing the crotch shape. I was way too busy bullying my old and faithful curve tool at this moment, but anyway, let's make amend. It is really important to respect a flatness, it's a straight, non-curved distance, of about 1 cm on the front and of about 1.5 cm on the back, and also to have it perpendicular to the inseam line. This will allow better connection of the front and the back when sewing them together. This time, dear friends, it really is the end of this tutorial. You can put away your pens and calculators. I really hope you will muster the courage to go ahead and trace your own pattern block, as well as your skirt, your bodice and your sleeves blocks. I promise we will use them. Bye bye! A bientôt